which is line with the one. Ten million, back with the ten. Hundred million. Uh, I'm at a hundred, I'm out here as far out as I can get. That's why we say a hundred percent, because it's the full capacity is what a hundred is. And ultimately, um, that is what mo numbers are modeling. They are actually real. They are emanations. And they're showing how reality is spread out, how it's given a metric. Um, it's showing how everything is sorted by this vortex, by this energy. So we, again, just accounting for our powers of 10 there is a function of our halving, um, which is precisely related to our reciprocals, to our doubling, to our family number groups, all of those interwoven into this one symbol. I could go on and on for days about this symbol and all the things you can do with it. I will say this final thing before we move on. Whenever you get stuck in the math, go back to your symbol. If it doesn't work in the symbol, then you need to think it through more. You gotta find the deeper connection of what's going on here. <coughs> this symbol has all the information that you're ever going to get in any stage of the math, which is going to get highly complex, and I hope to eventually be revealing that. So this was everything I had to say for right now on our symbol of enlightenment, and now we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, so we've had a fairly thorough going over of this symbol, the symbol of enlightenment, which is the mathematical decryption of the most great name of God. Now, it's another topic I like to talk a lot about, but I want to just stay focused on the math right now. From here we're going to change to something a little different, but we have to keep in mind all the principles we've discussed so far, because what this symbol explains now we're going to show in a whole new way that's going to lead to us being able to model true 3D reality. And what we're going to do is take this numerology of this symbol and turn it into something called quantum numerology. Um, like as in quantum mechanics, as in, as in quantizing or giving a spatial or a tile or a value or an amount to any of these numbers and to find the true secret of what I meant when I was talking about angle and ratio, how that works in three dimensions. So we can quantize numbers in any of our geometric shapes that we're working with, whether it's the triangle, um, the hexagon, the diamond. Of course the nine is the source of everything, so we're going to start by talking about the diamond by quantizing numbers in diamonds. Now you may be confused at what I'm talking about right now. So let me bring up this to help. This symbol, let me say the first thing, is incorrect because what you're seeing here is squares. I did it that way because this was graphed out and it was easier to do. It really should be diamonds. They should really be like this and these lines should truly be coming at an angle. But you don't need to worry too much about that right now. I'm going to explain it to you as we go. This beautiful chart is the quantizing of numbers, giving each diamond tile a number, uh, a function and a value, a quality and a quantity. With this map, you can model all the principles of physics. You can reveal the true secret of the atom. And all that we're going to go over. So let's just take a look at what we have going on over here. And then I'm going to do something really impressive. I'm going to turn it into a 3D object. If you notice, again, I said this should be at an angle. So really, going up like this should be vertical. Now my multiplication tables I was modeling before, I'm modeling now here in this interconnected series. Let's start here. There's a 1 right here. If I go up, notice I'm going multiples of 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that means here's my 9. So there must be a mirror image uh, with the 8s going down. 8, 
seven, six, five, four, three, two. All right? So this, my one and eight polar number pair are modeling my vertical axis. This system obsoletes the Cartesian coordinate system and shows how to model a true 3D. How about if I go this way? This would really be my horizontal, again, if I was at that angle. If I start with five, I have five, 10, 15 to six, 20, 25, 30, 35. Multiples of five going this way. Again, there's my nine. I must have multiples of four going this way. Four, eight, 12, which is three, 16, seven, 20, two, 24, okay, six. So multiples of one and eight are my vertical axis. Multiples of four and five are my horizontal axis. Everything around this nine Notice here I have six and three, two and seven, one and eight, four and five, all the polar number pairs positioned around my nine. This red nine is a positive nine, okay? So my one and eights are my vertical, my four and fives are my horizontal, but then what about my two and seven? Where is that? Well, you see, with those two and seven here, is it this? Well, no, those aren't multiples of two or seven. Two, five, six, no, seven, four, three. No, that doesn't work, so it's not that. My z-axis is actually coming from the inside out. The seven and two, which is the z-axis here, are coming out, piercing through the skin. They're emanations. They're invisible but you can see them by the way that they're displacing the other numbers. And I'm going to show you that, but I'm going to, I want to show you some other things first. What are other things we're looking for here? Well, I notice if I come this way, I've got my doubling. 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, 1, 2, 4, 8. And if I go this way, I've got doubling going the other direction. 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. Or I could say I have halving. Right? They're both going on at the same time. These are mirror image doubling circuits. We call them circuits because through doubling, all vibration is passed in anything with mass. So all material is moving. When you make electrical coils, these can be circuits. All right. So I have doubling going this way, doubling going that way. And then notice what's in between them. My nine, three, three, nine, six, six, nine, three, three. The multiplication series of my three, six, and nine, or the doubling of my three, six, and nine, making this. And notice what happens. The six, the three and the six, they never touch, right? They're just like magnetic poles. They repel each other, okay? So that's very um, important to recognize. In between the three and six, there's always a nine. Okay, there's never a three and six connecting where there's not a nine in between them. The nine is the control for everything. Also here, if I take in this group of nine tiles, I have one, two, four, eight, seven, five. Another vortice here. Remember, we were talking about the vortex, but we'll wait till we look at the 3D model to show what that really is. I just want you to see that I've got my vertical, I've got my horizontal, when I said you can see uh, my z-axis by how it's displacing everything, what did I mean? I mean by the numbers surrounding a number. Let's take a 1, for instance. This is a positive 1, okay? So an etheron is emanating out from the center. It's activating this number. Well, let's look at the numbers around it. Now, if we're talking about multiples of 7 and I'm lining it up with my 1, then I know it's going to be 7 here. So if I look here, 5 plus 2 is 7, 6 and 1 is 7, all right? And then I have 9 plus 2 is 2, 5 and 6 is 2. So 2 and 7 are shown by the way those numbers are surrounding it. You could do that, um, let's say if I'm doing 4, then I would be, I would be 1 and 8 would be, because 1 would be the multiple in that series of 7 piercing through the four. Probably no one's going to follow what I'm saying here, but you can see still I predicted it would be one and eight. Here you have seven and three is ten is one, eight and two is one, 